Hello. Welcome to Croc. Those are some funny looking gobos. Now, I hear many of you asking, A, what is this? And B, why am I playing it? Uh, I'll be talking about what exactly Croc is. He's an old platforming series from the dawn of 3D platforming. And I grew up with Croc 2. I never played this one. So this stream could go one of a few ways. I remember this intro. I had the disc for Croc 1. I bought it at some point in my life, and it was just... It, it was not workable. I would get as far as, like, the first level, and it would crash every time, so I was never able to play Croc 1. Hello, Darian. This has such a rare vibe to it. Like Banjo Donkey Kong 64. Just with the, the bright colors and the cartooniness and the big googly eyes. I'm, I'm only really just noticing. The Gabos look way better in Croc 2, also. In this one, they just look like little... They're just little JPEGs. They're just little 2D balls with eyes on them. They could really use a hero to save them now, don't you think? I guess, wow, I just I just played Rayman Redemption, so it's just kind of a, it's been a lot of PS1 platforming. As far as my solo streams go. Got a nice sound, I like the soundtrack, I like the colors of the Croc games. Stylistically, they, they're, they're pretty solid. They do have problems, though. And we'll get to that. Uh, nothing I need to worry about. Oh, there's a level select. Croc 2 was more like uh, you just went around a hub world and entered doors for levels. It was more similar to Banjo. So, you might notice this little green lizard fella looks familiar. Croc was, as I understand it, the result of Argonauts proposing a 3D Yoshi platformer. Back when Nintendo and uh, PlayStation, Sony, were working on a console together. This was way early in, uh, in the state of 3D gaming. So Mario 64 did not exist yet. That had not been released. They were working on this before that was out. So they had nothing to go off of. No predecessors to copy. And unfortunately, unlike Mario 64, which got it right pretty much immediately, Mario 64 had a lot of great stuff going for it. Croc didn't so much get it right. Oh, he loses his things like Sonic does. Uh, again, I like the aesthetic. It looks great. The music's nice. But you might notice... So let, let me show you how Croc controls. This is what happens when I press right. Croc rotates right. He doesn't walk to the right. He rotates right, and then you must walk forward. People describe the game as tank controls. And it's not... It's really not very fluid. It's workable. 
Croc 2 is definitely better. Like, I, again, I grew up on Croc 2. I was not able to play this one. Can I, can I put, move the camera at all? see me struggling to move. I wonder how much of it might be, uh... It's possible some of this is emulation. You know what? I should be using the... I should be using the D-pad. Because this came out before the PlayStation had... Uh, analog sticks. When the PlayStation 1 was released, it was basically a glorified Super NES controller. I think it had all four shoulder buttons, but it did not have analog sticks. It was just the D-pad and four buttons. And start and select. So Argonauts proposed this Yoshi game. Oh, that's the end of the level? I didn't want to hit that yet. I still had stuff to get. It fell through, and they were forced to make the game their own original IP. That being Croc. And this game... It sold a little bit. I think it was like uh, 3.5 million. The second game, which I will definitely say is better. At least in terms of the controls, which is a major part of having a good platforming game. Uh, the second game did not sell nearly as well. I think it only got like uh, 0.75, it didn't even break 1 million in lifetime sales. And so the, uh, I think the series as a total has somewhere around 4.5 million sales. I always thought it was uh, like comparable to Gex in terms of like nicheness and obscurity among platforming games. But uh, then I learned Gex apparently sold 15 million copies across all of its uh, all of its games. Which is more than three times Croc, so. And there's also the fact that I, I had this discussion with someone in uh, Wickersham's, with Goji, in uh, Wickersham's Discord recently. And Gex kinda has that, uh, that ironic factor like, Gex was memorable because it was so, like, cheesy and bad and try-hard. He, he really wanted to be that cool mascot character with the, the slick lines and the references. And Croc was just kind of, just kind of generic. I like him. I think he did, he did, a, get, did get a good first try for a 3D platformer before there were any other 3D platformers to go by. It just wasn't as good a first try as Mario. And then Crash came along, which was a technological marvel with what they were able to do with Crash on the PS1. Due to various uh, tricks. I believe this stays the same in Croc 2. You're collecting colored jewels to some end. Uh, I need five of them. Were there five in this level? It's also different from Mario 6. Well, I guess they're both technically collect-a-thons, right? Mario 64 just had the one collectible, though, really. It had the stars. And I guess, like, coins, which led to... You had red coins, which led to stars. But it wasn't like Banjo or Donkey Kong, which had, you know, five or more different types of collectibles.
I definitely like the hub world in Croc 2 better than this uh, level system. Makes it feel more uh, more populated. I'm kind of getting used to the way. It's better with the D-pad, I think. But uh, depending on how much of this I feel like playing. Oh, some of the color gems can be disguised as regular gems. I figured it was possible I might just do an hour of this and then do Croc 2. Or else do a, a two hour stream, do it, make it a one off, or I'll play the whole game. I don't know yet. Minigames. Look, he says Kazoo. This is the predecessor to Rare. I wonder if, uh... I wonder if Rare was aware of this game, if they took any inspiration from it. Because this came out Probably, probably before Banjo started development. I think it was, uh... They did Banjo first, and then Donkey Kong 64, and then Banjo-Tooie? Maybe I have that wrong. I don't know Rare as well as, like, Nick does. Oh, hello. It's up here. Like Crash, Mario's uh, Mario. Croc's movements are uh, pretty basic. He pretty much just has the the tail whip and the stomp attack. He doesn't have any fancy Mario parkour moves. Oh wait, I'm collecting the rats? No? I was supposed to whap it, okay. I wonder how different this would have been had it gone through with being a Yoshi game, if he would have gotten some kind of uh, tongue maneuver or something. Croc 2 also got some criticism for being extremely difficult. I don't know how Croc 1 compares. Oh, hello. What are you? Are you gonna hurt me? Yes, you are. Gabo, what are you doing? I, I, I deflected him. I can't go in there. That's fine. I don't want to go in there. Hmm. Destructible blocks with question marks on them. Where could I have possibly seen such things before? or something. Which, because he was like a giant devil creature. I always misinterpret. As a kid, I thought Dante was like another language for uh, the devil. Like Italian. Like Diablo was, Mex was Spanish for the devil. And Dante was Italian. 
Also because of the uh, the Crash Bash game. Dante's Dash was one of the mini games. It was like a, a, a lava area. They've got lava in the first world in this game. It's just, it's just kind of hanging out in this happy little forest grasslands area. What's it doing here? Oh, am, I, am I missing a key? Uh-oh! Okay, I'm good. It is like, uh, th this is Sonic damage mechanics. I just noticed I don't have a, I don't have a, a life bar. It's just if I get hit with no jewels. Oh, there's the key. How does damage... I don't remember how damage in Croc 2 works. Hello, Charles. The, uh, the Mafia cut out Yoshi's tongue so that he cannot talk. And uh, now he's got to make do with pluck, a backpack, and a tail whip. Or it might have had to do with him not doing taxes. One or the other. Oh, is this whack-a-mole? I like how the middle one is just Chewbacca. Uh, this doesn't control well enough for this. Okay, I get two hearts, whatever those do. Oh, they're lives. All right. I like the soundtrack. I forgot how nice the, the Croc game soundtracks were. It's got that, like, uh, that kind of salsa thing going on that the Emperor's New Groove did, which is also something that I considered playing. I'm gonna play the Croc games, and I'm gonna play the Emperor's New Groove on the PS1, which is a relatively unknown and surprisingly good platformer. 1B1. Boss 1? Or basement one. That's a that's a banana bird. Don't eat the banana bird. Oh. <laughs> he made him big with evil devil magic and then flicked him on the back of the head to make him angry? What, what a deep and involved story this game has. Ooh. Ooh, that pizzica pizzicato. I like that. I'm, I'm on an UFO. Oh, that's a life wasted. It's also got those, like, uh, those Rayman sparkles. Man, the P PS1, for having such a, uh, a wide market, like, they wanted to be more than just the kids' console. They weren't trying to be exclusively the kids' audience like Nintendo was. They were going for all audiences. And considering that scope, they did a surprisingly good job competing with Nintendo in what Nintendo specializes in. You know, these kind of kids' platforming games. 
Not to say Croc necessarily is the most stellar example, but they had a lot of, they had a lot of wide variety of uh, platformers. Cartoon, serial mascot games, you know the ones on PlayStation. I do think this is a better game than Dex. The Dex. Gex. Even as awful as Croc can be to control. I enjoyed it enough to continue playing it as a kid. I tried on multiple occasions to uh, play through the 3D Gex game I had. Enter the Gecko, was that the one? And I just, I, I couldn't. I couldn't get past, like, a level or two. You just... Between the gameplay, the setting being all industrial and dreary and unpleasant, and his annoying personality, I, I couldn't... I couldn't play Gex. I need to get this soundtrack. I like it. Do I just whap it? <laughs> what threatening music? I can't stomp on him. I'm out of I'm out of not rings. I I guess I whap him. There's like no okay. That was an impact noise. What what an epic throwdown! The gladiators would be envious of this show of manly action. Oh, he got me. This dude just walking in circles because he doesn't have the turn radius to damage me. While I just kind of flaccidly tail attack and die over and over again. Combat is not this game's strong point. Well, okay. That boss washed me. You go in there, you, you lose your gems, and that's it, you're done. You just have the one hit for every life thereafter. And it's not like Sonic, they, you don't really get a chance to collect them again. They disappear too quickly, you get hit, hit once and that's it, they're gone. Uh, go ahead and date this stream. The Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were just announced the other day. As well as uh, Legends Arceus, Arceus, the spinoff game. That looks to be, people are comparing it to like Pokemon Breath of the Wild. Get hit, come on. Okay, I gotta, I gotta get him once, and then when he's recovering, I gotta... Come on, get a thing! Croc! I can't, I can't control him well enough to get my gem back reliably. Oh, maybe he just stops on his own after a while. I thought it was me, like, hitting him with weird hitboxes. I think he just needs to run him, run himself out. Yeah, he just run, he just runs out of energy. He's like a, a tired little toddler. That, that is what he's doing. He's toddling. Look at him. He's adorable. This is the least threatening, yet most effective first boss I've ever seen in a video game. Get this, like, 
sweet mod music playing. Like, do you really think the butler did it? No, this, this is too, like, there's too much, too, too active to be Scooby-Doo music. Is this the part where we become friends? And, and I ride him onto the next level? No? Okay. Rayman, this is not. It's also the opposite of, like, uh, Yoshi's Island. I, the child, am going on a quest to save those who raised me, the Gabos. Oh, there's a level after the boss? Okay. I wonder what the plot would have been had it been... A, uh, a Yoshi game. I guess instead of, uh, instead of King Gabo, could have been like Baby Luigi who was captured or something. Now. Beep, 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 beep. Back that ass up! I, can I not get this guy? You have so little time. If he is gettable, I don't I don't know if he is. And there goes that gem. I don't know. I don't think he's gettable. The only punishment for dying or getting a game over seems to be getting kicked from the level. Which I'm fine with. I don't need more than that. There were some games still even on the PS1 where uh, you get a game over and that's it. Your file's done. It was... Rayman was kind of one of those. You could always reload the file, but... Uh... Man, a, cam a camera control would be great. People shit on Mario 64's camera, but, uh, you know, at least it had one. It could have not. It could have been Croc. This is what Triangle does. Oh, wait. Circle does a 180. That's neat. That's kind of useful to have. And well, I, That's especially useful to have in a game like this where most of your time is taken up by turning. I Did you, did you throw me out into the guy's hitbox? Why has he even got a hitbox when he's tunneling? Oh, these are climbable, aren't they? I feel dumb. West Side Story snaps in the soundtrack. Don't throw me up out into the guy's path, please. Ugh. You know, going into this stream, I thought, yeah, you know, it's just nostalgia. I, I liked them as a kid. They're not that great. I, I, I can play Go Back to Croc and forget about it. But now that I'm actually here playing it again, you know what? I want a Croc remake. It needs it for the controls, definitely. This would benefit immensely from better controls. 
But there's enough else here. Namely with, like, the... Ow. Namely just, like, the music and the setting and how colorful it is. This is worth preserving. I'd totally buy a Croc 1 and 2 collection. I think there were only the two. I wonder if there are any... No, this is probably not any Croc fan games. Someone's remade this in Unity. That would probably play better. Just in terms of controlling the character. It's mostly good, just bogged down by one really impactful bad. Because you, you gotta have good controls if you're gonna make a platforming game. Unless arguably you're Castlevania. I don't know, hot take maybe. Castlevania's lack of air control is no secret. Whether or not it harms the game really badly is up to... Uh, up to debate. Like the original, like the NES game, the first one. Oh, there was a key on top of that thing, wasn't there? Yeah. Ow! I remember you could buy stuff with the with the gems in Croc 2. There was a there was a shop. So I, which makes me think you probably didn't lose them all upon getting hit. That would be a little bit unreasonable. Navigated the death room. There are also checkpoints in Croc, too. Maybe we just haven't gotten to a point where the levels are big enough that we need them in this game yet. Gem, so what's over there? Oh, it's a Gabo. I probably need to get him. Do the croc dance. Yeah. Sidestep. This was apparently seen as an important action in early platforming games. Early 3D platformers. Both croc and Spyro had like a, a sidestep, side roll maneuver. And they were both kind of useless. They didn't really matter in the grand scope of the game. This is also the case in Croc 2, is that they're not at all afraid to have lava pits very early in the in the in the game.
is this a guessing game? I don't like I don't like making guesses. Did I guess wrong? Where am I? I just I just get one guess. Okay. So if you get all five gems, you get an opportunity for uh, I guess just extra lives. That kind of doesn't sound worth it. Does it keep track of if you've gotten all the gems on a level? I'm not seeing any indicator on the map. Cave Fear! Okay. That sounds like a pleasant place. Let's go to Cave Fear. As far as character designs go, I think Croc is reasonably successful, too. He's cute without being saccharin. He's not like a little, little Ugu buy me as a backpack character, like half of the Pokemon designs anymore. He's just kind of a spunky little dude, little dude with a stray tooth and a backpack ready for adventure. The, I'm gonna have to climb under these at some point, aren't I? These monkey bar-like things. goes up and down once? Excuse me? I have to race there in time? I thought that just activated it going up and down at all, and then it'd just be doing it forever now. Man. That makes this harder. Also in the tradition of Yoshi. They just reuse his voice lines for the next game. They don't need new ones. Who needs new voice lines? You can use the same voice lines for 20 years if you want to. push a block into place on a timer. That sucks. Did I miss it? Do I have to get up there? Maybe I can, uh... Can I grab that? I cannot. Well, okay. I don't know how they want you to do that. Oh, well. Sorry, Gobbo. We're the rats. What hit me? That looks like a, that looks like a Bubsy 3D enemy. Oh, they fire projectiles. Okay, I can kill it. Good. It looked when I kill one uh, when I kill some of these enemies, it makes like a sparkle collect noise. That's kind of confusing. Uh, anything 
special around here. I think for the most part, I'm just gonna kind of book it for the end and not really worry about collecting everything. I say that after I've been collecting most things on most of these levels. It seems like the colored gems are just for lives, but the gabos might be important for something. I hope I don't have to collect- I don't- I hope this isn't Rayman. And I have to collect every single one in order to fight the final boss. I never actually beat Croc 2. I got a good ways in it as a kid. And I attempted multiple times to finish it. I just never pulled it off. Maybe, maybe I did. I think I remember the final boss you fought in like an airplane. Unless I'm misremembering, which is entirely possible. Oh, there's... Okay, this this bonus room has a Gabo in it. So if Gabos are vital collectibles... Oh, there's the key! I missed the key! Am I going to be able to get that now? I think I, mi I think I missed the key. I didn't see it was there. So if these gem bonuses can have gobos in them, then it's possible that some on some levels getting the five gems is necessary. Well, that's all just gonna be. I guess some of them could be lives. Justin Charvona. Doesn't look like he has his own article. So. Darkness descends. We're getting we're getting some heavy level names for World 1. Cave Fear. Darkness descends. Yeah, this is 90s all right. And then it's just a happy look. This, you know what this looks like? This looks like Spyro. In terms of just the like the the levels, the overworld. Excusing the tearing. That's a that's a EPSX thing. EPSXE. Oh, what? Excuse me? Get over here! What kind of weird minigame is this? Catch the collectible? me. It can damage me. Okay, this isn't worth it. Sorry. Okay, box, you win. You get to live. Yeah, there's the, there's the grabbing and climbing. 
Or the monkey bars, rather. I mean, even in a game where I had, like, full, fluid control of my character, that would have been annoying. Dun, 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 dun. Uh-oh. It's a lava fall. Again, what an obstacle for a world one of a little happy kitty video game. That's how they came up with the name for Kazooie. They, they played Croc and they heard him say, Kazoo! You know what this music sounds like? It sounds like, uh... It sounds like it would be in a visual novel. Like, I'm about to go ask, uh... I'm, I'm about to go ask, uh... Hoshi-chan out on a date. Oh boy, I hope he says yes. I'm so tense, I could die. Oh, Yotoko-chan. So good to see you. It's, uh, it's floating rock platforms. So much so that they're prominently featured on the cover of the game. So here's a thing that's interesting. These jelly things, I didn't expect them to exist in this game. Because in the second game, they sell out hard. They had some kind of some kind of sponsorship deal with lifesavers, and as a result, the entire game is full of lifesavers gummy savers. These these platforms are still there, however, they are lifesavers gummy savers, and you can plant them and bounce on them. By them, I mean light sa lifesavers gummy savers. Buy now. Fight Night with Flibby. Okay, there's two bosses in the first. Maybe it's like Crash. Maybe there's Islands. It, it's a bug. These lesser characters really look like... like halfway between Bubsy 3D and Banjo-Kazooie. That's a Pokemon. That's a fighting bug type. It's like it's gonna be a, a regional form of uh, of ore beetle. Uh oh. Oh, we're good. We're fine. Oh, that's weird how the, uh... Oh, did you see what happened? The momentum. Like, as soon as I entered the airspace above the platform, I, I started moving with it, and the camera did too. That's a bizarre way to do that. Let's see if I can adjust myself with the little sidestep. may have sur surmised this from footage so far, but Croc's weight alone 
is not enough to cause damage. He must thrust himself down upon enemies with great force in order to, in order to destroy them. So he can stomp them, but he can't just jump on them. Looks like uh, its face looks like a bulbin. Okay, it, it's a Koopa, and there's an audience that goes, "Wow!" It's an art audience full of kid Owen Wilsons. Come on. This kind of sounds like Sonic music. Croc's got a long recovery time. Oh, some really bad platformers on the PS1. And the N64 as well. Rascal immediately comes to mind. That was one that I think I had, and I sold or got rid of or something. Or I just never played it because it was, it was just a very bad platform shooter? About some, like, annoying little punk kid with a toy ray gun or something. And I was never motivated to get anywhere in it. And I saw it at, like, every used game shop. They always had a bunch of copies. No one wanted this game. The Ice of Life. Oh boy, Ice World. With as Croc? Oh boy. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. How many how many worlds are there? Maybe Google can tell me how many worlds are in Croc. Each of the four main islands contains six normal levels. Okay. Alright, so four islands. One more than Crash. Oh! fall on ice water. Obviously, Bubsy 3D in regards to just awful awful 3D platformers. That's one everybody knows. I really think that uh, like Gex and Rascal were, were on comparable tiers, though, in terms of gameplay. Oh, this dude's gonna, he's gonna like stomp my fingers. Is that what he does? That's exactly what he does. I 
I don't like that the enemies respawn in Croc. I've never liked that. That still happens in Croc 2. but if I break the crate, I can't get back up here, so I would have to, uh... I would have to somehow avoid that guy as I, as I monkey bar back. So I'm just gonna not do that. It's kind of a wonky way that he, uh goes along the monkey bars. You see that the, the camera was kind of like shifting left and right, depending on which hand he had on the bar at the time. Beep, 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 beep. This is, this is very jiffable. The croc booty is backing. You best get out the way. Jack expressed some interest in being around for Croc. I don't know how much you care about Croc 1. Or even... what. Well, the, the, here's the thing about Croc 2, in addition to uh, what I've said about it so far. And, you know, gameplay improvements like Croc controlling at least a little bit better. They had a thing called Omniplay. As an option in the options menu. And what that did was, uh, it allowed the controller plugged into Player 2's slot to perform whatever actions you had set up in the settings to allow them to. So if you wanted to give them full control, you could have both Player 1 and Player 2 having full control of the character at all times. Which is really just input from both controllers, so you end up with both players just fighting over every action. It's like, it's like Twitch plays Pokemon, really. And a game that is already... just hard enough. And a game that's already hard to control, specifically. That just make it just makes it impossible. The rats. There's a lot of rats here. Mammoth rats. It's kind of weird to think this is a 32 bit game compared to the N64's, uh, now, well, 64, obviously. It looks nicer than an N64 game in a lot of cases. Like, this looks this looks comparable to, like, uh, Donkey Kong 64. Again, barring the screen tearing. Which is a graphical glitch with the emulator. EPSXE is funny. Not ha-ha funny, but... Uh, I had to spend a, uh, a while setting up before the stream. And it's got some, like, uh, obtuse settings, some bugs, some things that made it difficult. Maybe I couldn't get the uh, full screen and window sizes to work as intended. Which is why I'm doing this in full screen, and it's, uh, 
running in 720. I couldn't get it to uh, I couldn't get it to work in 1920 by 1080. Or you know I I even tried to set it to uh, a 3-4 ratio because that's what the the PlayStation One was. Be really careful. Oh, we got we got we got a comedian here. We got Crash Bandicoot level titles. I tried to set it to a 3-4 ratio, and I couldn't even get that working. So it's just it's just stretching. I guess it's stretching. Maybe it's like a maybe it's like a widescreen fix. Maybe we're seeing maybe it's rendering more of it than we would see on the PlayStation. I'm not sure which. The intro animation, like the fox, was three by four. Oh, can I stomp on him? I can. Okay. The spikes mean nothing. This kind of tense winter music. This isn't like Happy Christmas Wonderland music. There's a little drama. Like maybe we don't have enough food for the winter. Presumably spawn platforms up to there. But I do not have a key. Oh, oh well. Sorry. You live up there. I'll try to do at least uh, at least two worlds. Maybe a little bit more. That way this would be a... Uh, I think I'll do all of this. It'll be a two-stream game. As long as, again, I don't have to collect every single Gabo. As long as I don't have to do that, I think I can manage. Oh, there's the key. This is the happier uh, ice music. As compared to this map. Is that the is that the little ice gremlin guy going? Ah. Hey. All right, I'll save you, little fecker. What did I learn about? I learned about a uh, a physicist today named Vladimir Fock. F O C K. Which makes me wish they had named a college after him, because then we would have Fuck You. He does apparently have a few, like, mathematical and, and uh, physical concepts named after him. Like, uh, Fox Space? Turns out we were incorrect to call it the Fuck Zone. It is, in fact, Fox Space. That's slippery! I say as if surprised by the ice world. Man, it is extra slippery, though. There's like, a, I, I guess, a patch of snow to give you a breather, but not really, though. Even that's that's slippery, too. This, this is a nightmare with these controls. All right, well... Our Gabo quota on this level just went down to zero. I am not spending any more time here than I have to. Wow, 
Why is this music playing for this part of the level? It should be playing for the next part. The part with the bottomless pit. This is the treacherous part of the level. I guess it's following the uh, Donkey Kong Country rules. Where the, pr the, the prettiest music is reserved for the hardest parts of the game. Where you're going to need the nice music the most. How's the tank controls? They sure are tank controls, and I can definitely say that Croc 2 improves them. Hello, Goji. You caught me in the ice world of all places. But aside from the controls, there's more good to this game than I remember there being. I like the visuals, I love the music, the music's been great. After coming back to it, I kind of do want remakes now. Like, if they just made him, uh, if they just made him control better. It was worth preserving. I like Croc again. Also, yeah, I mentioned earlier, his uh, just as a character, his design is uh, it's cute without being cutesy and like saccharin. Like he doesn't look like he's made to sell plushes, like the little ooh, -ooh cheeky face Pokemon or anything. He's just kind of a cool little dude with a backpack and a sense of adventure. It's also very, uh, very rare, like the character design. Just a lot of little cartoony things with googly eyes. And the levels even kind of look like, uh, like Donkey Kong 64. Riot Burr. Like, like Barrier, but without any of the vowels. Riot Burr. Uh, Goji, you... So you played Croc 1. I grew up with Croc 2. I never had this one. Do you happen to know if, like, I need all the gobos for the end of the game? Can I, can I like, not 100% it and still beat the final boss? need 100%, and in fact, the 100% ending is terrible. Oh, like Jack and Daxter. Uh, well, what, what now? But there's water levels? Since when does Croc have water levels? This wasn't in two. Still spin attack, spin attack. You know, as, you know, as far as water controls go, this isn't too bad. He's got a big turn radius. He moves at a reasonable pace. He's got an attack. This is about on par or better than Mario 64. It's still a water level, it's not as... I was about to say it's not as good as playing on land, but it might be better than playing on land in Croc's case. Oh, this again. No. Nope. Not gonna bother. You're not worth it, living crate. Well, 
if I, if I don't have to 100% it, this will definitely be, definitely be much more manageable. Oh yeah, graphically it looks very nice for the time. It looks similar to, uh... It looks similar to, like, Spyro, which was... Probably one of the best looking graphical series on the on the PS1. Mostly in terms of Spyro himself and the worlds, more so than the NPCs. The NPCs were kind of half-assed in Spyro. Maybe not half-assed, but you could tell there was a there was a very noticeable like uh, polygon and texture difference between, say, Spyro and Alora. All the work went into Spyro in terms of character uh, character design, and making him look making him look good on the PS1. Well, let's talk about the 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 blobs for faces they had in Metal Gear Solid 1. Yeah, the faces were just like three polygons with a blurry texture on them. Oh, where am I going? I have two keys. I went here, have I... This is, is this level a big circle? I think I'm going in circles. Is there nowhere else I could go here? No, this was a this was a dead end. So this is the first level that we've had that hasn't been basically linear. I have uh, looped around it looks like, and I now have to explore for the correct way to go. Here we go. The bosses in this game are also a little bit rough. The, the first two. Given that I'm being expect expected to fight them on the ground as Croc with these controls. Uh, Croc 2 had very scarce bosses, and when they, they had them, they were more like, uh, they were more gimmick fights. As opposed to actually using your, like, tail attack on the bosses. Usually they involved picking up crates and throwing them in some form. Beep, beep, beep. Uh-oh! I'm good. We're fine. Oh, I got all of them. Uh, is this worth it? This seems really not worth it. Nope. No, thank you. If I don't need 100%, I'm just gonna hit this thing. There you go, that's his victory jingle in Smash. Do, 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 do. Chumley Snow Den. How many levels is this? How many levels were in the first island? Okay, so three levels, then a boss, then another three levels, and a boss has been the format so far. Croc before Gex. I was joking, obviously, but... Neither Croc, nor Gex, nor Bubsy would make particularly interesting Smash characters. They just got nothing... particularly unique about them, or what they could do. And honestly, Crash doesn't have a whole lot, either. 
to work with in terms of unique moves. He's just kind of good at running and jumping. But he's fun, he's wacky, he's iconic, so I, I, I'm, I'm in the crash camp. Despite that. Then again, considering how, like, uh... How basic Mario is without power-ups. Like, power-ups was the thing that made Super Mario stand out as a platformer. Aside from it being, you know, the scrolling thing, but other games had done that first. Oh yeah, you could definitely make a moveset for Crash, it just... He doesn't have as much interesting things to uh, draw from as some other potential characters. That's okay, though. I actually like a... Uh, I like a more basic character every now and again to uh, mix in with the... Uh, the more technical ones, the ones with, like, fancy meters and gimmicks like Joker and everything. I like that about Banjo, despite not really liking the Banjo video games. A, because he had just had such a long storied history of wanting to be in Smash. And of being a huge part of Nintendo history, of being the N64. Uh, hello. What are you gonna do? This looks like a this looks like a Rayman 2 character, this guy. I'm doing damage. Okay. It's kind of hard to tell. They don't, like, flash or any... Or there's no, like, hit or anything. Again, I give this game a lot of lenience because it didn't really have anything to work off of. This was before Mario 64 existed, so it was, along with Mario 64, one of the pioneers of 3D platforming. Just going in based off of nothing. Which is probably why they thought this tank control thing was a good idea. Because they just, they didn't have other games out that had proven that you could do it without such controls. Uh oh. Actually, that brings to mind how uh, they didn't include a camera stick in uh, Mario or Zelda games for the longest time because they thought it would be too complicated for kids to understand. Until Minecraft happened. And it was one of the most popular kids' game. It was the most popular kids' game in the world. And had that kind of control for its camera. And Nintendo was like, oh. Oh, I guess we should do that then. Sometimes you just need someone else to show you how it's done. This is a very generous bonus. Five lives for finding a little sparkle in the corner? Yes, I, I did mention that earlier, that this was pitched as a Yoshi game. 
which makes me wonder how different it would have been had that gone through. Because Tro uh, Croc doesn't have any, like, tongue abilities. Like, I wonder if Yoshi would have still had the tail whip and also something to do with his tongue, or... Would there have been some kind of egg functionality? Would they have just ignored those parts of Yoshi? Yoshi and Kirby never did go uh, 3D. Donkey Kong had limited success doing so. They never went back to it. That's a, that's a nice looking waterfall for the PS1. I like that waterfall. I just died while uh, uh, appreciating the beauty of that waterfall. Well, I kept the key though, so I guess that's fine. Beep, 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 beep. It would have been interesting to think about as a a croc with like a grapple would have been cool. I like games with grapples in general. But that was probably a little bit ambitious for a 3D like this. Oh! Oh no! Oh. Also, I didn't realize this game was like Sonic and that you have no health bar. You just, uh... You lose your gems when you get hit, and if you get hit with no gems, you die. I don't think that's the case in Croc 2, but I don't remember how the health system does work in Croc 2. But I know there was like a, there was a shop that you could spend gems at. There was definitely more body to the game, and you had a uh, hub world. It wasn't uh, level select like this game is. I own Kirby 64, and I tried playing it again recently. I've never been able to finish it. Ow. I, I just... Kirby games are already pretty slow, but Kirby 64 especially is just painfully so. There's just no horizontal movement speed in that game. And also it being, you know, the crystal shards thing. You more or less have to 100% it. Or do a lot of, like, hunting through levels and collecting in order to get the ending. Mm. I don't like this area. The combo power-ups are cool. I think everyone who played the game liked, liked those. looks like it's a grounded platform sticking out of the liquid, when in fact it's a floating platform. There we go. Tense winter music. I don't think Croc gets much more in terms of movement in the second game. They do polish the... They polish the movement. It feels better than this game. And he gets, uh... 
he gets a thing where he can ground pound and then bounce higher. I think that's the only additional move you get in Croc 2 that isn't in this game. You want me to go back again for those crates? No thanks. Give me, give me the thing. Give me the gong. I wonder how the music in Croc 2 is. I'm gonna have to get this game's soundtrack. I really like the, the Croc 1's music listening to it. I just don't remember offhand what the music in 2 was like. Oh, it only comes down once? It's one of these again. I'll, uh, I'll definitely play Croc 2 after this one at some point. Ugh, it doesn't even stay down. These are, uh, these are mean. Come on, camera. Turn, ro rotate. Uh-oh! over there, and there's the end over here. Not a fan of the Banjo games. Uh, it was, yeah, in part because of the movement. It, f it felt, like, uh, slow and clunky to me. Which is obviously more so the case in this game. But I also just, I didn't really care for the, the setting or the characters of Banjo. Rare's always been, like, too, uh, too cartoony for me. But Goji is aware of my preference against cartoony Sonic. I liked the Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 because they were attempting, you know, a serious continuity and storyline when other serial mascot games were more cartoony and didn't really care to try try that. And this is this is colorful. This is also pretty cartoony, but not like uh, I don't find it cartoony the same hammy degree as uh, Banjo and Donkey Kong 64. Like, oh, yes, DK, your progress is astounding. You'll have to face my newest minion. It's it's just so hammy and Hanna-Barbera. I love Donkey Kong 1 and 2, again, because that was something that other platformers weren't doing. It was very natural and beautiful and ambient. More so Donkey Kong 1 than 2. And I just kind—I kind of fell out of, out of love with the series from three onward. Oh. oh, I don't like these platforms. I also noticed this game does a does a very strange thing with physics, with uh, moving platforms, where as soon as you enter the airspace above a moving platform. Even though you haven't landed yet, you will start moving with the platform. It's a very bizarre way that they coded it. Oh, 
It's strange we don't see much reverence for this game as other platforms of the era. It was one of the best selling ga PS1 games. How did it, uh, how did it fare against others? I mentioned the numbers earlier in the stream, that it was like, uh, 3.5 million. Like, what are, what are some, uh, what are some other sales numbers from the PS1? How did, uh, how did the, th there was only one 3D Gex game, right? The first one was 2D, and then I think Enter the Gecko was 3D. How did that one sell? Oh, there were two 3D Gex games. Because the 15 million I mentioned for Gex was across all entries in the series, across all platforms. Crash 1 came after this, and then uh, Spyro didn't come about until Crash was on his third game. So Spyro 1 came in tandem with Crash 3. Uh, can I, I can't make that jump, can I? Try. Oh, it's <laughs> that you know that thing I mentioned. It happened again. I thought it was a platform. Is it a butterfly? Okay. I thought it was a platform that was submerged in the lava or the ice water, and it's actually a smaller floating platform that is closer than it appears to be. gets added to Smash, but he has the slowest turning in the game. Like, it, it takes him half a second to fully rotate from facing right to facing left. License to chill. Oh, is this a British game? I guess Argonauts. Lizard Captain Falcon. Does Captain Falcon take a long time to uh, turn around? I wonder if Croc was in Smash Infinite. That uh, massive collection of Brawl mods that included, like, everything ever made. Oh, they can throw stuff? Screw that, I'm gonna go in here. Not sure if there's a Rivals croc. Probably that seems m less likely. Mostly because Rivals hasn't been around as long. 
And also a lot of the characters, quote-unquote, in Smash Infinite are just skins of other characters. Not like fully formed with their own movesets and everything. I think uh, Beautiful Joe and Pepsi Man are both skins of Captain Falcon, if I remember correctly. What am I doing? I shouldn't be out here. This is an ice platform floating in the abyss. What is that? There's a... There's a little secret platform floating in the abyss there. Can I land on that? Is that a secret? Pioneer. I'm gonna do this for science. Oh man, I wish I could see the camera. I missed. What's the point of that being down there, though? I'm on my last life, so I'm not gonna attempt it again. have numbers of questionable accuracy for Gex 2 and 3. Both at around half a million. Was it another situation where uh, just everyone bought the first Gex and then no one bought any of the others? Because that's clearly what happened to Croc. this little platform. Gex 1 sold under 1 million on PS1. How many platforms is Gex on? I know it was on N64 and Saturn, right? Uh, what does it want me to do? Oh, I didn't get here fast enough, I bet. This is one of those buttons. X1 was on 3DO, PC, Saturn, and PS1. The Croc games were also on a few platforms. I know they were on P uh, PC and PS1, I know that. I, I gotta get to you. I gotta get to you, Mr. Gong. Rascal briefly earlier in the stream. What were some other what were some bad PS1 platformers? PS1 N64. Glover, I don't think sold fantastically, but it didn't look awful. I've seen gameplay of it. Blasto, I haven't heard of Blasto. I had Rascal, and I saw it at, like, every used game shop. No one could sell Glover. Or, no one could sell Rascal. 
That, I saw Glover had ever used Game Shop too, though. Mischief Makers. Isn't that the Data Design series? Like the people who just churn out shovelware games. Is, isn't that Mischief Makers? With like Trixie the bunny? Or something? Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Uh, how was, uh, how was Castlevania 64? I know among Castlevania fans, it's not a popular game. But was it, it, was it, was it like, Rascal Bad, really? Where am I going? I'm going on blind platforms in the dark. This looks like a crash level. This looks like Road to Ruin, but icy. Just with the, the backdrop. I remember not liking Castlevania 64. But you liked Gex as a kid, yes? Nope. I remember uh, Darian was here earlier and he mentioned liking Gex as a kid. But revisiting it as an adult and not being able to play more than a couple levels. Which was always my experience with it. Emperor's New Groove I had on the PS1 I've mentioned. That was a surprisingly good platformer. I'm actually planning to stream that at some point as well. Bugs Life I had on the N64. I don't remember if that was a platformer though. I mostly remember running around carrying berries in that game. I don't remember if there was like jumping involved. I am being attacked by a giant snow Jinjo. So far, the strategy for every boss has been to avoid them until they are, like, obviously vulnerable in some way. Like, him being off balance and then to attack them. Oh, there you go. There's one of these bosses, the multipliers. Oh, they're gonna get faster, too. I at least grew up with Gex, too. I didn't like it even as a kid, but I had some very, very small amount of nostalgia. Gex 1 also I just found very boring. I, I could never get into side-scroller Gex. Oh no! Oh, I gotta start the whole level over? Alright, speedrun time. On ice. Ice abyss platforming. Oh, Jack would hate this. is we need to uh, do a crossover game. We need to put Gex and Bubsy together. It'll be like good cop, bad cop. 
Bubsy can be the wisecracking nice guy who makes funny mouth noises like the guy from Police Academy. And Gex can be the smartass. It'll be perfect. It'll sell a, a million billion copies. Everyone will love them together in one place. Try to make stupid jokes over one another. It's the most ironic possible video game you could create. I remember someone made a fan move set for Bubsy and Smash, and it was revolving, because there was nothing else interesting about the character, it all revolved around his death animations. Which I guess if you really wanted to reach, you could do for Crash as well. But he's got more than that to offer. Bubsy and Gex are so, are in particular, are so sad because they live on through memes. It is entirely ironic, their fan base. But more so Bubsy, there's probably some legitimate Gex fans out there. I don't know how necessarily good at being critical of games these fans are. Maybe they're blinded by nostalgia, but I'm sure there are unironic Gex fans. Oh, no, no, please. Oh, God, I don't like this boss. Please, get... Okay, I got my ring back. These aren't like Sonic rings. They don't stick around long enough for you to... reliably get them back. This is a cool uh, reflection effect. On the, on the ice, though. I just noticed that. That's probably kind of visually impressive for the PS1. He seems confused. I think his brain was in the other half that I just destroyed. Just hit these ones anytime. Great. He was a bobcat. Isn't Bubsy a bobcat? Bonkers was a cartoon character that I never saw the cartoon for. But I know he had a Super NES game that was, at the very least, more competent than Bubsy was. Oh, hello, Desert World. We get two of my least favorite world types, ice and desert. Great. At least it's not going to be slippery, though. It's a nice little uh, detail that they have specific crate types for each world. Well, are you talking about reviews of the first Bubsy game was Super NES, wasn't it? The market was absolutely flooded with those kinds of games for a time. 
I remember Arrow the Acrobat was another really bad attempt at a Sonic clone mascot platformer. Oh, that's lava. Or some some manner of damaging liquid, whatever it is. There was Rocky Rodent. There was, uh, oh, what was the... What was the, 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 the kamikaze squirrel? Do you remember that one? Every company had to have a mascot platformer. And we did, we did get a lot of good ones out of it. There was a lot, there were so many bad ones that just went nowhere. Mr. Nuts, was that his name? Ow. Croc says what we're all thinking. This track in particular reminds me of the Emperor's New Groove soundtrack. It's like all Latin jazz and salsa. Oh, it's the best way to get up there. And then you get like a, a mod track like this one. And I get Spyro vibes. Get up there, I guess? Yeah, you have to go straight to the key platform. <sighs> I don't want to just stop after World 2, because I know that World 3 and 4 are going to be harder than the first two. And if I do that, then I'm gonna, it's going to be like a three and a half hour stream to do the next two. how the the mascot platformer thing only really took off with uh, with Sonic like no one else was trying to do platforming mustached men it was always animals with attitude For some reason, that's what everyone thought was the winning recipe after Sonic. Despite Mario generally outperforming him the whole way. Maybe they didn't just didn't think they could compete with Mario. Maybe Sonic was more a more attainable goal to rip off. And there were Mario ripoffs, but they were a little more brazen about it. Like, they were usually bootlegs. A lot of them on uh, on PC and DOS. Uh, Gianna Sisters being one of the more famous and successful ones. Having grown into their own... Their own series that has still gotten games fairly recently. Did you know gaming put out a uh, video on Mario bootlegs just today? I don't think they've done a video on like uh, failed mascot characters 
or attempted ripoffs of Sonic or otherwise. Why did I do that? Oh no, he's sliding down the ledge. Okay. They did one for Bubsy. I, I just mean a general, like, cover all video of uh, platforming mascot ripoff characters. Not, indivi not them individually. Let's say derivative characters. I like the music, I don't like the room. <laughs> this level's rough. It's only gonna get rougher from here on. sand pit. Just get a key to climb all the way back up here with. Oh no, I did that already. As this game goes on, I'm going to have to increasingly prioritize not collecting things. Alright, see you later, Goji. thing in one sitting, but do I? This whole level is, as Jack would say, a big bag of dicks. And I have no idea how bad the, the later levels are going to get. Probably going to talk about this more uh, tomorrow. When I likely do a stream with Jack, Jack is off tomorrow. But, uh... I finished Kim Possible. I'm looking into uh, other... Other Western animation with arcs to watch. And I realized that uh, I, I recently rewatched Powerpuff Girls on Netflix, but they only had the first four seasons, and there were two that I didn't get to. So I'm watching the rest of that, and I might have been a little bit hard on Kim Possible. Because now I'm watching Powerpuff Girls, and I'm going into it, and I'm, and I'm just watching episodes and thinking, oh, this is stupid. Which I don't like to say, because I've always had, you know, a level of respect for that era of Cartoon Network cartoons. But it's holding up less well, I find, as time goes on. Mummy man, why did I do that? Do I even need to go? There's a locked... I can't open that. I don't have a key yet. Uh, mummy man can't hurt me down here, it looks like. I don't like the way this looks. 
What? Man! I can't even drop on the on a on a platform a foot below me correctly. It's slightly off center, it's like a little bit to the left of this platform. And Croc has no shadow, of course. There's a very uh, limited view shadow. Is that is that the Okay, no, this is level two. I finished a level. Good. I was worried I was going to have to start over from uh, the beginning of the previous level again. Yeah, I don't like this damage system. The Sonic Ring system doesn't work great in a platformer with as limited mobility and as high difficulty as this. I, it happened again. Okay. I am alive this time, and I even have a gem left. Oh, it's dark. What is this? Is this a boss? This is the titular mud pit. Is that like, is this the Sarlacc pit? Is that what I'm hearing? Interesting, uh, stretchy platforms. That's new. I don't think I've ever seen that on the PS1 before. I remember a lot of a lot of levels utilized these uh, monkey bars that you could also walk on top of in Croc 2. These platforms are kind of neat. These are like something I'd see in Mario. Uh oh. Uh, ah! It shrunk, and I fell off of it because it shrunk. Well. I just threw away all that level progress. Is this going to be every level from here on out? Just getting a game over multiple times on each one? Because, uh, boy, I'm starting to feel pretty Croc 2 right now. Croc 2 got nasty hard at points. Why does he go backwards like that? So, I, do I have to land and then rotate? Okay, I actually did not fall into the mud this time. What kind of mud is that that damages you? Is it boiling? Is it just Croc getting his clothes dirty and losing the life represents the time he has wasted having to go to the laundromat? Perhaps that is what is being expressed here. If you just, if you fall off the sand, you just slide into the mud lava, too. Wait, that was a big circle? No, this is a different mud area. Oh, good. Extra life. I need those. Nope. You are not worth it, Purple Gem. I know you will very likely lead to more extra lives, but... I will lose more lives attempting to collect you. Let's go deeper into the mud pit. And we're underwater. So X is thrust, is the water controls. Square is tail attack. 
triangle is look. Ow! Circle is still 180 degrees. That that's a nice animation. Look at that. Look at him look at him rotate. Hello, what are you? Do you fire you do fire stuff. I'm just gonna leave. Nope. Nope. No, sir. That's a hammerhead shark. That's okay. Croc can punk him out. Don't mess with crocodiles. At least I don't have to worry about air. That's nice. And we're back out. Oh! Oh, and it's extra dark. We've got like a, a Crash Bandicoot Firefly segment. Is this time limited? It is time limited. Boy, why wouldn't it be? Come on, get up! Croc! Ooh, yes please. Thank you. Get me out of here. Maybe I can do this all in one stream. Maybe, there's six levels per world, so maybe not. Maybe I'll do half of World 3. Maybe I'll do one more level and a boss. Realistically, I'm expecting this to get harder before it gets easier. a lava cave. Feels like every level now has to have a pit of lava for me to traverse. Lava or a lava equivalent. Like early, early platforming games thought it was unthinkable that you could have like a pit that you could fall into and then respawn with maybe, I don't know, one hit point gone? Well, that doesn't make logical sense. If you fall into a pit, you have to die. You have to lose a whole life. It has to be an instant death every time. Enter now nowadays. Most platformers tend to have a much more minor punishment in areas that they utilize death pits. Captain Time, Mario Odyssey. I don't know what Sonic's doing, but uh, I guess I assume Crash 4 still probably has proper death pits. Then again, Crash 4 has infinite lives as an option, at least, so... 
at least you're never going to get a game over and have to lose level progress like in this game. Oh, more of those platforms that look like islands. What is this? Why did I come over here? Oh, it moves. All right. Did I need to come over here? I have a key. I probably the key was probably all I needed. I probably did not need to come over here at all. Floating islands. There we go. All right, where's where's this key go? Oh, right. Beep, 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 beep. Booty walking. Beep. Croc two, but I play the entire game in reverse. This is doable, right? Especially for these fast buttons. Totally not going to be a problem. Oh, this is going to be one of those things. What is this for? Do I need to be in here? Is this to progress, or is this just a gem? I hit the thing. Man! Oh, there's another door. Maybe we can just leave. Yeah, let's do that. Well, this particular water is good water. If it's blue, you can hop on in. All other liquids in the game are lethal. Is that it? Is this just a gem in here? That appears to be it. I don't need that. Where else can I go? These levels are getting more maze-like, and I don't like it. This way. This was the start of the level, wasn't it? Yeah, this was the start. So that's no help. This went to this room. And that went to the room where it went to the key door? I'm so confused. Now this is where the key was. There was nothing else in this room that I could see. So this is a dead end. This room's a dead end. There's no more doors in here, is there? No. 
that just spawns the platform below the below the gem. Which means there is nowhere for me to go except this stupid button puzzle. It's not even a point in me getting these. I just I fall in the lava, I'm done. come down once. That would be awful if they did that. And it's just a gabo. Which means there must be something in this room I missed. I don't have a key, do I? No. I did not get close enough to see the key. Or I just didn't see the key. One or the other. I'm gonna blame the render distance because that takes the guilt off of me. Salvation. What's over here? Just a gobbo. Oh, and one of those guys. Nope. I'm good. Not doing that. Get some extra gems, because why not? lives for whatever this boss might be. A lot of bosses in this game. The deadly tank of Neptuna. We, we got an underwater boss? Boss. What is this guy's end game? He, he captured the King of the Gobbles, but for what purpose? You know, I should have read the manual. That's how you find out any information about PS1 games. And they bothered to have an intro cutscene. It just didn't really explain anything. lot of gems. I think they're giving me a lot of gems because they know how hard they're going to be to collect in the water. That's my that's my operating theory. Is that okay? I just swim over that guy, I guess. I wish they didn't have levels before the bosses. I'd ra much rather just go fight the boss. Man. Down to two, one, zero gems now. I got one back. Sorry, no, zero. get any more? You all get any gems? I can get a life. Nope. Can't even get that. I 
Like, what's the point of even collecting more than one gem? That's as much as you're gonna have a use for. Why am I facing that way again? These hitboxes. Why these hitboxes? I'm gonna go for it. Lives are good. I've... Okay. I wasted all of my lives trying to get that life. Yeah, he's a fish. Now he's a big scary fish. I just, there's no difference if you have one gem or 20. I'll just stick with this. This is plenty. Never time this right. Never ever. Okay. I made it through, and I have my gem. I am in good shape. Comparatively. Alright, what are we doing? You got a tango for me. Oh, uh, well, there. And it falls? Why does it fall? How come it doesn't float like the, the rest of the level they did? I guess that's when he's vulnerable, is when he goes, uh? From to Tim Allen, and then I go for him. And now, once again, I am without gems, which makes me entirely vulnerable. I'm gonna have to do that whole level again if I die here. I, yeah, I'm gonna die here. This is gonna be awful, isn't it? This whole boss. Okay, yeah, so it's when he Tim Allen's, it's just finicky, like everything in this game. <laughs> Alright, I'm just gonna book it and hope for the best. This will be the final boss of this stream, this stupid fish merman. This thing looks scarier, if I'm being honest. That's such a tiny window! Probably worth going for that life, but I'm still not going to.
I guess logically a crocodile would be in his element in the water. Confirmed. Crocs down B would be a counter in Smash. It's basically an anime swordsman. Well, that was not as bad as I was making it out to be. Still kind of sucked, but... I've saved a bird. I guess I'm, I'm meant to be saving these birds? I don't know what they are, but... I, you're welcome. Oh, are these the birds, like, carrying me from level to level? I guess that's why I'm ringing the gongs. It calls the next bird. Sand and freedom. This is a good... I, have I not saved this entire time? There it is. There you got. We got Crash. We got Spyro. Crash 2. Crash 3. We got Rayman 0%. Oh, wow, that must be from when we, uh... That must be from when we attempted to emulate this. And it failed, and we had to use the disc. We had to use the, the actual PS2. And it was blurry and gross. CTR, right, the, when we streamed Rayman 2. And there's our Crash Bash. I guess, did we... Did we I, did, I don't remember if we emulated Crash Bash, or if we played that on the, uh... If we played that on the... EPSXE. Alright, 40%. Well, that's it for today. That's Croc 1. I will continue to struggle with controlling the character. Obviously, that's not going to go anywhere next time. Still like the, I still like the visuals. I like the music. The music's very nice. And I may, I am going to finish it. I'll give Croc 1 one more stream. I'll come back. I'll do the rest of World 3, World 4. Probably be a two-hour stream. And we'll finish this off. Do Croc 2, Emperor's New Groove some other time. Watch us tomorrow. I'll probably stream something with Jack. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you later.